she's a wonderful sister, beautiful energy. So please give a warm round welcome for Sister Susan. <laughs>
But you can use that, you know, and your intent, it'll go to, I trust, the right deity. So you can write it as a prayer, or you can write it as a command, simply a command to the universe. Let such and such happen, or bring me such and such. And then at the end, you put thank you. It's a good idea to put thank you, because when you give thanks, gratitude connects you to your next blessing. So I always say thank you at the end. So you write your request, thank you at the end, uh, put your witness in there, and I write it as small as I can. I write it, but then I tear it out or cut it out, and I fold it up. See, this is the page. This is the actual size of it on the internet. And you can see how tiny that center is. That's why I write it real tiny, and I put it at the center, or you can put it in a vial, a little bottle. Now, if you have lipstick, you know those, uh, the lipstick container? You can take the top off. And that serves as a vial, it'll fit nicely right inside, and you can just slip it inside, okay? Uh, otherwise, you can just put it on there. Sometimes I tape it so that it doesn't come loose. Now, which way is north in this room? That way. This way? So what you're going to do, <laughs> now, <coughs> this is a blown-up version. When you create this, See, you, you, you just don't take this that's already made. You must hand draw this. Let me repeat. You must draw this by hand. You start at the center and you work your way out. It says here, to use it oriented north-south with the pilot. That's the circle pointing north. Okay, so you start with the plus and you draw your next, you draw your hexagon, then the next hexagon, then the next one. So you have all of them there and then you draw that. You have your request, put it at the center so that it does not extend past that. Let me show you. So I make sure I feel tracing. So you would have this under paper. See, you can see through this. And then you just simply trace it. Okay, I'm going to make it big so everybody can see it. And then you draw your hexagon. And you draw your next one. And your next one, and so on. Until so you have it all done. And then at the base, you know, you're going to have this thing. So now you have your paper. When you put it in, it must not go out the lines of the first hexagon. Okay? So pretend we have that situation right here. You're going to turn this baby north and put it somewhere where it will not be disturbed. Maybe, I don't know, I put mine under my bed. <laughs> uh, it was just me in the house. No one's going to. But anyway, I, uh, the very first time I used it, I was suffering from a severe viral attack from having breathed chemtrails. This was in Arizona a few years ago. And um, I'd never experienced anything like that before. And I remember reading that this thing is supposed to protect you against viruses. So, and microbes, so I brought it up. I'd already downloaded it on my computer. So I brought it up and I very sloppily traced it off my computer. From, from the center out. It was a mess because I was a mess. And then uh, I faced it north, and I'm not even sure if it was all the way north, and I just took some tissue. I just stuck it in my mouth and just went like that because I was, I, was I was just out of it. Well, within moments, I could feel a difference. And then within five minutes, I could definitely tell, tell that something was going on within 15 minutes, I was completely back to normal. So that, that really impressed me, and I realized, okay, there's something to this. Some time later, a friend of mine hurt his finger in his car door. He, he actually 
jammed his thumb in his car, car door, and he was, oh, he was worse than I was. And he was in a lot of pain. He had painkillers, but it wasn't, it wasn't really working. So I said, well, let me try this technique. So I just, very sloppily, I just drew one from memory. And I said, okay, which way is north in your apartment? I said, that way, okay, let's face it, that way. And then I, uh, I think I put his toenail in here or fingernail, something. The witness can be your saliva on tissue. The witness could be a piece of toenail or fingernail or a piece of your hair or it could be, uh, yes, it could be your photograph. It could be your full name on your birth certificate. So I forget which witness that I used, but I used the witness for him. And, um, and then I just, I completely forgot that I had put it in his living room. And then he asked me, 10 minutes later, he said, what did you do? And I said, oh, I just made one of those little diagrams for you. What happened was, it didn't totally take the pain away, but it softened it. It, it lessened it considerably and made him extremely sleepy. Okay, so that he could, when you sleep, that's when you're healing, so it he could heal him. Okay, then uh, some time later, what, maybe months later, I needed $400. I did not have $400, so I made a request. Bring me $400. Actually, excuse me, it was $4,000. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And I was skeptical. I didn't think this would do anything, but I just did it to see what would happen. Because I needed it. So I put it under my bed and forgot about it completely. Then two months later, when I was giving my house a thorough cleaning, I came across this under my bed with a little note. I said, what is this? Open it up. Oh, what? I did get my $4,000. I actually got more than that. I received a check for a book order, a large book order. And it was well over $4,000. And so since that time, I use this to the hill. I use it for everything. If I have an interview, I'll, I'll put a request, you know, uh, let all proceed well with my interview. Thank you. And I put a witness of myself. Uh, I'm about to get on the plane to come here from Samoa to, uh, to England. And I knew that I had to stop in America because there was a know, taking the next pain. I did not want to go back to America. I don't feel safe in America. And the, the policemen at the, in the, uh, the airports, they're like, they're like dogs, you know, like watchdogs. I'm ready to <coughs> snap at you, you know, uh, the least little problem, pull you aside, whatever. I didn't want anything like that. I wanted to, to all go smoothly. I did not want to be detained. And so um, I put my request in this and this, the Janessa crystal. I'll talk about this in a moment. What did I say? I said something like, uh, let me arrive safely to London without any problems. No, I didn't say problems. I said, let all go well, let all go smoothly. When you request something, you want to put it in the positive. You don't want to say, uh, let me have no problems. You don't want to do that. You just say, let all go well. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you don't say something like, don't let me have an accident. You don't say that. Mm -hmm. You say something like, mm, uh, let everything flow beautifully. You know, you know what I mean, I hope. Yeah. You know, you put it, there's a way to address things so that you maximize the positive without putting attention on the negative. There's a movie called The Secret. Yeah. Have you all, yeah. If you haven't seen The Secret, you should watch The Secret. And it explains that very well. Okay, so I get to America and everything proceeds beautifully. You know, there was one policeman, you know, he said, uh, you need to see my passport. And I said, oh, I'm American. He said, well, you're, you're not anybody to me. You know, uh, give me your passport. He was very rude. <laughs> he looks at it. You know, he's questioning, he's interrogating me unnecessarily, in my opinion. But I'm just as, you know, relaxed and uh, almost teasing him, you know, almost playing with him. And he just he let me go, and everything was well. And I get on the plane, I come to London for the second time, very happy to be here. Everything went very well. 
Uh, I always do that before I travel. I have one of these working for me, one of these working for me, so that everything proceeds smoothly. Okay, uh, now what was another, I'm thinking of another example. A friend of mine's cell phone broke, and I made up, I made up a little note, fix so-and-so cell phone, make it work right, thank you. <laughs> Five minutes later, his cell phone comes on. And I said, oh, he, he said, oh, my cell phone is working. I said, oh, that's because I used the psychic shield. Oh, I don't believe in that, he said. I said, oh, okay. So I take the note out, throw it in the trash. Sure Guess what happened? The <laughs> <laughs> cell phone stopped working. <laughs> it stopped working. And so he said, uh, Cesar, what did you do? Could you, could you do it again? I said, well, I don't know if it'll work the second time. But I did it, and like magic, the cell phone came back on. So the thing affects physical objects. It seems to be very good for emergencies. I've used it for all kinds of things. Now, sometimes, the, sometimes it's something serious. Like a friend of mine, uh, he was in serious, well, he actually, <coughs> he dropped dead. That's kind of serious. Yeah, that's very serious. <laughs> <laughs> His wife brought him back to life through CPR, whatever they call that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was in the hospital, critical condition. And I immediately got to work. I made several of these for him, including putting him in this. And it turned out he was... Whatever it was that caused that condition, he, he was the 1% that survives that. It's like almost a 100%, you just don't survive with whatever it was he had, but he survived. Now, other people were praying for him too. So anyway, the point I'm making is that this little simple thing is incredibly powerful. Sacred geometry, they call it. Sacred geometry is one of the stolen or lost or suppressed keys that's now coming back to us. Mm -hmm. See, what we did, we externalized our essence into these forms. You've heard of the golden spiral? Yeah. Yeah. You get a seashell. Uh, let's see now. It goes something like this. Your finger opens, literally opens up into a golden spot. I could put a pin here. It will be the golden spiral. Your hand, starting from the finger, sweeps out into a golden spiral. Okay? Your entire arm. This is the golden spiral. Okay? It's, that's sacred geometry. The implication, when people say sacred geometry, it implies that some geometry is sacred and some is not. Well, that's not true. Just like uh, the Elbion split up star signs. And they said, oh, this is astronomy. And that's a real science. And this is astrology. And that's not a real science. That's not true. Okay? It's all one. And it shouldn't be broken up like that. So one day we'll come up with a better word for sacred geometry. Sacred geometry seems to be the keys to the universe. I also think this is why we can sit in what is called meditation in a certain, uh, certain format. We are aligning our sacred geometry. You know how they say keep the back straight? I hate that. Mm. I hate, I don't meditate because I can't stand trying to sit there and be still, but there's something, <laughs> sitting straight, there's something to that when you sit straight a certain way, you know how they do in the yoga pose? Yeah. It's, it's, it's aligning your, your points, your sacred geometry, and it's much easier for certain energies to flow through, through you and for you to flow through those energies. So yes, I encourage you, uh, we, I trust we'll have time, we can trace these, and we can have our own, you know, when you go home, you can, you can try this. Now, uh, This thing can also be used this way. You have it sitting on the table or couch or wherever, and you, you orient it north. 
And you can just take your hands and focus your thought and send a thought that way as well. So it can it operates that way too. I prefer to have a solid note in there with a witness and a thank you and all of that. Yes. Oh, oh, let me say something. Please feel free to interrupt, ask questions, or, or, or if you want to make a comment. Okay? okay. Now, yes. I'm sorry, um, I didn't ca quite catch what you were saying. If every time that you use the paper or something, you have to use a saliva or something? Well, or whenever such. you make a request, the, the, the witness, you must have a witness with it. Like if you say, let's say you need, uh, how much money do you need? She just said 10, so he, she wants 10 pence. <laughs> 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 40,000 pounds of cupcakes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. 40,000 pounds. Right. Uh, if you say, bring me 40,000 pounds, thank you, and put it in there, it'll get the 40,000 pounds, but it doesn't know where to take it to. Yeah. So um, the witness is where to deliver the, the, the object of your request. Okay. So you either put your full name that's on your birth certificate. Bring, what's your name, dear? Angela. You can't just say, bring me Angela, because there's thousands of Angelas in, in okay. England. So what's, what's your full name on your birth certificate? Oh, I'm not disclosing that. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> bring me Angela Taylor Harper. Yeah. 40,000 pounds. Thank you. It could be as simple as that. Uh, or right. you could write it, you could write it to creator. Mm -hmm. This is the this is the name that I use for a creator. It's uh So what I do, I say, Uma T. Al, please allow, and I just put my request for, please bring me, please let, sometimes I, I might get detailed, you know, uh, and then at the end I say thank you, and I roll it up or do whatever, and I put it in here, or I put it here, or both. Okay, when I, when I had the chemtrail poisoning and became very, very ill, I had about 15 of these operated for me. See, every time, every well, I won't go into describing that, but it worked. Now, um, if you all remind me, I'll later tell you about this, how, where that came from, how that came about. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, so that's the psychic shield. I'm going to pass these.
sitting at my computer, I asked a question without using words. And I asked Creator, what is your true name? But I didn't use the words. And instantly, this appeared in my mind, in my consciousness, it was so quick. And I, and I just, I'm thinking, okay, I made that up and I dismissed it. But then I said, wait a minute, we must honor Mama. and respect what we receive, honor and respect ourselves. So I said, let me look into this. So I wrote it down because when it, when it came to me, the spell and everything was complete. I wrote it down, Umatiya, and I looked at it and I said, you know what? Uma has Ma in it, which means mother, and Tiao sounds like Tao, T-A-U, which is a word for the letter T, which has anciently been a symbol of the male genitals. Therefore, this is mother, and this is father. This is the Divine Mother, Divine Father. So I accepted it as a name, a true name for a great mother and great father. And then later, I found out that Uma is a word that exists in many African languages, and it literally means grandmother. Yes. So uh, this is a name, a true name for creator. And as long as I'm talking about this, I'm going to give you... I'm going to give you one of the most powerful names there is. It's a united name for a great mother, great father. It is so powerful. It is a mantra. If spit happens, if, if, if stuff is happening negative, you can sing this. You can say this over and over again. You can meditate using this. And what it does, it sends out waves in the form of spheres of divine energy, and it opens portals just like this does. And it's... <coughs> and the way you pronounce it, now please feel free to sing with me, it's a drawn out
extremely powerful. So these are two names for creator. When you make your positive energy generators, the next workshop is going to be on how to make these positive energy generators. You make it with three things, resin, equal amounts of resin and metal particles, and a quartz crystal. Okay? While it is curing, meaning while it's, it'll get hot, the resin gets hot, and then it gets hard as a rock. When it's, when it's hot, it's curing, it's getting hard. If you're playing whatever music, whatever tones you, you play during that time, it's going to become a part of this permanently. And then this, this will broadcast that energy. So when it's curing, you can sing. You can sing in the world. Uma Tiao is especially this. Okay, uh, and it will be in here. There's another, there's another uh, <coughs> song or chant that you can sing. It's called the 47 Words of God. And that's on page 47 in Black Empowerment Survival Guide. This isn't available yet, but the group that brought me here would make it available. And it's this in the is muffin also paper. very powerful. What? It's in the muffin paper. Oh, that's that's right. It's in the muffin yeah. papers. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. This is very, very powerful. It's the vibration of the universe. And it heals just like these tools. These all these tools can be used for healing. Including the 47 words of God. That's all it does is it heals, it restores peace of mind. And if you continue to sing the 47 words of God, what happens is it draws your kami, that's K-A-M-I, your kami angels to you, and you will be able to communicate consciously and directly with angels, and they tell you all kinds of marvelous things. Yes. Okay. Maybe later on I'll sing it for you. Okay. Now, we're done, we're done with the psychic shield. So we get out of the way. <coughs> Is everyone familiar with this? I introduced this uh, yesterday. This is called the Healing Mandela. Now, uh, this device, again, is sacred geometry. It's interesting. Look at the configuration. Notice that you see the similarity? This has six sides. This has six crystals. But it has at the center another point, which makes it a seven. Technically, like, like a snowflake. It looks like a snowflake. call it African, they called it Atlantean. And I don't know what it is about the shape, but it's extremely powerful. You know, it energizes, it also is a healing tool. And I don't know who, whose idea it was to combine it into this shape. But when combining this shape, this thing is a portal, another portal for divine energy, divine life. And it heals. Let's say you come home, you're tired. You can put one in each shoe facing up, hold one in each hand, sit on it, and maybe even look at one. And within, oh, let's say five to ten minutes, you will be completely energized. A certain guy could not sleep. I told his mom about this. She put it under his pillow. This was a guy who had basically burned out his mind from drug abusing drugs. 
And she told me that when she put this under his pillow, this is the first time he slept well in years, in years, just one time. Uh, you can charge your food. You know, most of us eat a sub-health diet. You can take your food that is not that healthy, your donuts, your potato chips, whatever, and your healthy food, and place it on top of this, and this will put back the energy that was lost during cooking, or processing, or whatever they did to the food. You can charge your water with this. You can charge your pillow, charge your shoes, charge anything. There's no limit to what you can use this for. I call it the healing mandala. And it's also discussed in the book you need to get called The Muffin Papers. The Muffin Papers is also a complete guide to how to make the Oregon generator or the positive energy generator. Tomorrow we will have a play shop on making this. And what this thing does, it takes all forms of negative energy, microwaves from your cell phone, the ELFs, the extremely low frequencies that we're constantly bathed in. You can't get away from them. We're sitting under fluorescent light, that's not healthy. You turn on your radio, there are radio waves, all these waves. We've never been subjected to so many waves. It's not healthy for us. We don't know what true health is because we have all these health oppressors that we're constantly trying to fight. You're not conscious that you're fighting this, but your body is. If you were in an environment that did not have all these waves going on, you would feel like you can levitate. You will think differently. You will see life differently. You will be happier naturally, like children. They don't need a reason to be happy. They don't need 45,000 pounds. <laughs> 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 but they might want the cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> but you can have, you can literally have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> when you use these tools. So, um, could I ask something? Yes, please. Do you have to say a prayer again with this circle? Oh, no, you don't have to. I mean, <laughs> or write uh, anything, there's sorry. nothing wrong with saying prayers, you know. Um, you can say prayers if you want to. You don't have to. <coughs> sorry, I didn't mean to say the prayer. I mean, you know, the thing that you write with the other one. You know what, ma'am, I really don't know. You all can experiment and write your request and That's put it in right. here and see what, this might actually be more powerful than that as a manifestation tool. I don't know. I haven't done it. But, uh, you, you know, every time I've, I've discussed this, someone has asked me a similar question, so I think that there might be something to that. So I encourage you to try it. Make your request. Put it in the center of one of these things and see what happens. Uh, you can do remote healing with these. You get the picture of your sick friend or their name you know, write their name out in full on a piece of paper and just put, put it there, put, put the other, uh, take the other one, sandwich them between this with your hands like this and uh, say a prayer for their wholeness for about, I don't know, maybe a few minutes or five minutes and just do this and they will get results. That's what I did with my friend that fell over. Okay. Uh, now... Any questions before we? Yes. It's hard to know with the healing shield. Is there a way? The of what? The healing shield. Is healing there, shield. Yes. Is there a way of disposing of it once, once you? Do that? A way of doing what? Of, 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 of disposing of it when you're so patient or whatever. Is this? There a no, 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 no. Oh, oh the psychic so, shield. Yeah, 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 yes, it's fine. Mm -hmm. I keep it. I just keep it. Yeah, just keep it. If you draw it, don't use a Xerox one. You must. Hand draw it. And uh, don't worry if the lines are not perfect. Now, I do use a ruler, but the original ones I did, I just did, I just traced it by hand. I didn't use a ruler, and they worked fine for me. And my messy, sloppy ones, they work too. <laughs> but I think that um, uh, it's probably better if you do it, uh, you know, neat, if you can do it neat. It, it feels, yes. 
said uh, the symbol was found in Africa as a ring. Are you talking about ring that you wear? Or? Yeah, it was found as an actual ring oh, okay. that was wrapped on, uh, I don't know, probably a mummy, because they found it in Egypt, um, the camp. And uh, it's very popular. Uh, people are now making jewelry with this, and they call it the, they call it the Atlantis ring or something like that. And it should be the African ring or the Egyptian ring or Kamek ring, but they won't give credit to us. But that's okay, you know. We we're going to fix that too. <laughs> and that just belongs to us anyway. You don't mind. That's the way it is. It's just their form of denial. They can't accept us mm. for what we are. And we can't accept us for what we are. And when we move into accepting ourselves for who and what we are, and end our denials, then we won't be receiving the denials you're getting from all our children. That's how I look at it. Yes? I was looking at that this morning. I'm thinking of, you know, making something like that in a three-dimensional uh, frame so that, like, because if that have energy in the, in the one dimension as, as it is, if you make, like, a, a big, something maybe half the room size as a power generator. Oh, my goodness. <laughs>
If you allowed your hair to remain nappy and especially put it in locks, that you'd be able to tune in to all kinds of things, theoretically. Well, my niece, who always straightened her hair, she had, like I used to do, she had times acquired anti-nappy syndrome. <laughs> well, she eventually got over it and she started to lock her hair. And then she called me up one day, Auntie, Auntie, when you locked your hair, were you able to tune in to more? In other words, what happened, what was happening with her, she started to see herself in a light she had never seen herself before. And she started to understand her mother like she never did before and the relations between her siblings. And then she started to see life differently and it just blew her mind. And the only thing she did differently was allow her hair to lock up. And after a few months, she started getting these insights. So that proved my theory that um, your hair is antenna and locks really allow you to tune in. Yes, sir. The locks are really the keys. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Mm. So it's, it's spiraling. We are the original Oregon generator. We are the original power generator. They're terrified of us. We are in a spell. We are asleep. We don't know how great we are. When we wake up, things are going to change. According to Alex, when you wear these rings, two rings, you wear one on this finger, one on this finger. It has to be your little fingers. When you wear these rings at nighttime while you're sleeping, what happens is, it reverses the aging process. If you are old, you actually start to grow younger and younger and younger. If you are not old, you look young, you will stay young, you'll never grow old. Furthermore, according to him, if you wear these rings every night, you simply will not die. You will live forever. This is what Alex says. What's and the only way, way Alex too, and the only way you can die is if you get killed, <laughs> according to Alex Chu. My attitude is, these rings have been around for about maybe 15 or so years, and that's not immortal, that's not eternity, 15 years. So we don't know if they will grant eternal life. However, if they only permit you to live, let's say, 800 years, 900 years, that's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Given the life expectancy, that's average, right. it is 25. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. And see, you actually are supposed to live here as long as you desire and stay in healthy and young as long as you want. And then when it's time for you to leave, you don't die. You ascend. You, you go, okay, I'm ready to go now. And you turn yourself to light and you raise your vibrations up to the next level. And that's it. That's how we used to do it. Do you all remember? Because some of you in this room have ascended more than once. Anyway, ascension. I know that dying is very popular on earth. <laughs> but ascension is, is going to become the new style of leaving in the world about to be born, in the world that is on the way, which is really this world raising its vibratory rate like we raise our vibratory rate when we are sin. Yes, sir. <coughs> Speak up now. Okay, do you think about, what do you think about the ascended masters and how, is that how they've done it using the young presence of people? Have you met any of them? No, I've not, but I've read about them and I just wanted to put your take on that. Are they real? Well, they talk ascended about it in many masters. books. <laughs> Give me the name of one of these masters. Um, people like Saint Germain and uh, the Have you seen any brothers? The they all look pink to me. Obviously, they do many things in terms of what they're doing and what they're seeing in these books. I just wondered what your take was on uh, some of these, these. You wonder what my take is on the ascended sure. masters? I don't trust them. Okay, um, there is a Luciferic light on this planet that appears to be very divine, saintly, and good. And they speak of the white light. 
and they speak of the white brotherhood. Stay away from that white light. That's Lucifer. Okay, you want the golden light. The white light looks pretty, but it won't lead you to where you think it's going to lead you. They say that when people die, they see this light, they see this white light in the tunnel. If you find yourself dying and you see the white light, look away. <laughs> don't look at that white light. Look away. Look up. Look to side. Don't look at that white light. Because it'll pull you. <laughs> and the next thing you know, you're back in the body. You don't want that. The planet, the planet, for all practical purposes, has been kidnapped. Planet net. And we are, what should I call us? Slaves. We, yeah, we're slaves. That's that's <coughs> we're slaves. Everybody, basically on Earth, are slaves. Do you think we're in a vibrational prison? You, you know what? You all are very, very conscious. You know, why? Why are you coming here talking? You, <laughs> don't, don't you give the lecture. You're right on. You're right on. Yes, we're in a vibrational prison. Any other comments you want to add to this? To what they're saying? And we have to break out of it. And we have help. Okay, y'all. Uh, we authorize this. We don't remember because we have serious amnesia. That's part of us being in this spell. When we wake up, can you imagine remembering your past lifetimes? Many of them waking up one day and remember, oh, I've been here many times, and you, you, you very clearly recall, and you recall being masters, because you all are masters. You know, when, when I see something that says master, ma the implication is that you ain't a master when you are. When, when you read in books and it says the gods, a long time ago, the gods, the God, that's us. <laughs> you know that. That's us. We had the power to just go like that and cause major changes in nature, move mountains. We abused our power. We did some terrible things. We did it all, the good and the bad. We had it all. And look at us now. We have, relatively speaking, nothing. This is all part of our learning process, our growth process. We're about to graduate. <laughs> things will change, guaranteed. Now, uh, so now immortality is becoming fashionable. Most people do not accept that these rings will reverse the aging process. They don't even bother to wear the rings to find out and prove or disprove that they work. The rings work. Don't take my word for it. Make a pair or buy a pair. The group that brought me out here will be making these rings available for purchase. So um, you can, does the group have a formal name? That's what I thought. Tahuti. <laughs> what does it look like? I'm going to show you. Okay, let me read a little bit about the immortality rings. Oh, these funny looking glasses. This is a type of This is what Alex Chu says. Alex Chu is the inventor of these rings. He says, you will benefit from these devices throughout your life. After wearing the rings for a few months, you should be able to gain some results, like starting to look younger, becoming healthier, becoming more energetic. You will be amazed about the anti-aging effects these devices have on you. The eternal life devices, according to the inventor and many testifying experimental users' beliefs, do allow the users of such devices to stay physically young forever. The device is believed to do mainly two things, stop you from aging permanently and turns you physically younger. For example, if you are 50 years old, by using the device daily, you should look like physically 30 after 10 years. You will notice that blacks don't look their age anyway. You know, I know a sister, she's in her 50s, and she looks about 22, 23. It's incredible. I've met quite a few blacks like that. Oh. 
He says, I am extremely proud of my Chinese culture, background, and myself. If I were not Chinese, now check that out, Chinese. You know that the Chinese culture was created, or it, it developed from the Shang Dynasty, and the Shangs were black people. So he's proud to be Chinese, and you know he's, he doesn't know this, but the Chinese culture is African. <laughs> Wayne Chandler. Right. Wayne Chandler? Yeah, yeah, Wayne Chandler. Ancient future. Ancient future. Ancient future. Yeah. The eternal life, he says, uh, if I were not Chinese, I would not have invented the eternal life devices. All of my knowledge concerning magnets is inspired by the study of Qigong. Qigong is the study of flowing energy in the human body created by magnetism and by electricity produced by the human body. It taught me about the important pressure points of our body. Mama? Because of these pressure points, I have done several experiments on my own body when I was 19 years old, that was in 1990. I found that if I locate the ma magnetic rings with the polarities described in the pictures provided above, the blood circulation becomes smoother, metabolism becomes stronger. This discovery gave birth to the process of eternal life. And then, in addition to the eternal life rings, there are the foot braces. The foot braces are 300% stronger. If you have an option, between the foot braces versus the rings, Alex advises to get the rings. He explains that the whole human body is a magnetic community. Each individual cell is a magnet and has polarities of north and south, just like a regular magnet. This is why cells attract each other and form into a more complicated community. <coughs> an animal body. A human body carries magnetic flux currents which cycle around the body. If this magnetic flux cycle in the body gets stronger and faster, the body should become more healthy. The rings have an anti-aging effect because the magnetic flux they generate will propel the blood circulation. The magnetic devices speed up the magnetic flux that cycles in our body and therefore affects our blood circulation system. Cells are dying faster than they are reproduced due to the lack of energy and food sources that slow blood circulation. Now, with my invention, metabolism can be accelerated and be allowed to distribute adequate energy and food sources into entire body cells, keeping the body young and healthy. Now somewhere, okay, here it is. She says that, uh, that your fingers and toes are the polarities, like, like on a battery. He says that when you wear the rings, and I'll give you instructions. Can everyone see this? This is a diagram. This is uh, your left finger, and uh, pretend that this is one of the magnets, okay? This is the North Pole, this is the South Pole. So on your left finger, wait a minute, that was wrong. This is my left hand. No, no. <laughs> 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 this is my right hand. Okay, um, I'll do it this way. On your right hand, north or the plus sign goes up. On your left hand, north goes down. So south is south is going to be up. So, uh, see on my right hand. Right middle finger, you have a magnet on top, a magnet on the bottom. The North Pole 
is on top, the south pole is on the bottom. So there's two little magnets. You can't see this, but it's two magnets that, and your finger, may I have uh, some? Could someone please volunteer? Okay, I'll take it.
show them the secret to push it, push it across, and then you can get it apart. So what you do is you're going to mark the magnets, keep them separate, that's number one, <coughs> and then he just says take plastic and tape, hold them in, in place. So, how do you know which is north and which is south? Sorry. Ideally, you would have a compass. The compass will let you know which is north and south. Otherwise, uh, what I've done here is I just took, this is uh, Alex Chu's magnetic ring. I'm going to pass this around so you can look at it. And so where it says, where, where the plus is, the plus is higher than the rest of the plastic, so you can feel it. And I just took a magnet and stuck it to it. So that's how I know that that's north, because the plus is north, so underneath is south. I'm going to read a few testimonials. Someone wrote Alex and said, I have been an advanced type 2 diabetic for 15 years. I am 49. I have been wheelchair dependent for the past five years due to my feet turning a dead grayish white from complications of the diabetes causing no circulation in them. The doctors have recommended that they soon be amputated to prevent gangrene. gangrene. I have lost all nerve sensation in my feet and lower legs as well. Pills, insulin, controlled diet, nothing worked. I have to tell you that your rings used with the foot braces propel so much blood into my feet that they have turned a rosy pink full of live, alive sensation, saving my feet from amputation. That's one lady's testimonial. And another person said, I really do believe I am feeling much more energy already. For the first time in many years, I am walking before my alarm, waking before my alarm. You know, it's hard to read this even with these glasses. It's so tiny. So you can read it out. You can read it out. Someone can read it out. Lawrence Durrell. Okay, I can't read this. Get someone to read it out. I'm going to tell you. If you have to stand here and read this. Can you read that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, these are really good. No, I don't need that. I really do believe I'm feeling much more energy already. For the first time in many years, I am waking before my alarm and getting up feeling very alert, refreshed, and energized. It's unbelievable. I, till I got the rings, I was always late for work in spite of setting three different alarm clocks. On weekends, I slept most of it away. Now I'm eager to get up and go. I'm so encouraged and can finally look forward to a more zestful and robust life. You have got to have you. You have got. You have my permission to use my testimonials. Testimonials, if you wish. Thank you, Alex. You have got something here. Warmest personal regards, Mary. Thank you, Marie. Okay. <laughs> right. uh, there, there was another story. Uh, a man wrote Alex, and he said that if you are a couple, he he advised Alex to, to have like a an advice that uh, couples, both parties, should wear the rings. Because what happened was a man ordered it, and he didn't order it for his wife, and uh, he was able to have erections again. And uh, he intercoursed his wife to death. They had been making love for over five hours, and she died having an orgasm. I can think of no better way to go. <laughs> I can think of 
no better way to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You take that to the bank. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were the bank. <laughs>
going to take tape and you're going to vertically Here's your ring. Here's your magnet. Get it on there like that. Plus side up. You got your tape. In fact, I do want to do something. I'm going to put the tape on the magnet so you can hold it. Put it on there. Go underneath. And just wrap it around. That's all you're doing. You're just wrapping this around onto your plastic ring. <laughs> and once you get it all the way around, use up the tape, and it looks something like this. I'm going to draw it. <coughs> this is your plastic ring. This is your magnet and the tape is over it. So it kind of looks like that, like a little box on top. Mm -hmm. Now, this is extremely important. You have to mark a plus. Put a plus on there for north. That's right. Now, you're <coughs> going to take another piece of tape longer than this. And you're going to go horizontally like this. Does that make sense? See? It's horizontal now. Going around. And to hold it in position. Is that clear everyone? And you do the same thing directly underneath Plus, plus. But this plus is going directly under. Does that make sense to everyone, what I'm doing here? This is two magnets. Let me show you this. I'm going to draw it high so the people in the back can see. You have two magnets, and they are stuck together. This is the North Pole. If I were to pull this one away, it's still north on top. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. And your finger is going to go between these. So, here's the magnet. It's underneath. Yes, you get it? Yeah, that's right. It's like these are two magnets stuck together. If I could pull them apart and stick my finger between them and then uh, use the tape and the plastic to hold them in position. That's all I'm doing. Yes, yeah, so I can't pull, let me see, I'm trying to pull this apart. I use my technique. Plus these, are, these magnets are smaller than the ones that he uses in his ring song. It's extremely important to uh, make sure you know which way the north is facing. And you, you can make them both exactly the same. You make them both the same. Because all you're going to do is turn one upside down on the other hand. And you're in business. So now we need to put a horizontal band on this. Where's my uh, the ring that I was passing around? Has everyone seen it? No. Has everyone seen it? No. Who hasn't seen it? Please give it to the person who hasn't seen it. What? 
are very simple to make. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You, did, you know what? I'm just showing you a way to do it. You can do it another what way. About, what about these people who use like these magnets that they sell for commercially? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah magnets like this. Like this. Yeah, yeah th like those are good. Those are good, but they're not going to reverse the aging process. They'll make you feel good. They'll energize you. You will feel the difference. They might slow down the aging process, but these things literally reverse the aging process. No claim of eternal life is put on the magnetic bracelets and the various, like the magnetic mattresses and other devices. All those things are very beneficial. But only these things, only when you orient the magnets this way and wear them a certain way, do they reverse the aging process. Someone had a question over here. Uh, yeah, uh, two, two questions. Yes. Could it be um, possible if if one just took if you just put the magnets there, stick them there, and put the tape around it? Or, or yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you can do that. Oh, oh, you know what? <laughs> You're right. He, he he made an excellent point. It will slow the circulation. Okay. Plus, you know, when you have these things on, you want to be able to take them off easily. Oh. Yeah. Now, um. Yeah, it's going to be a mess when you take them off. Or if, if somebody like knows a jeweler, for example, could, uh, could, uh, could, uh, could you know, if I could get one designed like... Okay, Alex says use plastic. Yeah. Oh, okay. You buy this rings, it's plastic. He shows you also how to make the foot braces. Okay, for about, what, uh, $4 in America, in America money, $4 each foot, 8 bucks. The foot braces are more expensive, they're like 70 or 80 bucks mm -hmm. for a pair. Mm -hmm. When you use metal, especially magnetic metal, uh, some of the energy, a lot of the energy goes into the, the ring, you know, the metal. You want that to go into you. Mm -hmm. It will interfere with the circulation process. So, but if you can get the rings made out of wood or a uh, material that does not okay. conduct, that, that will work, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about doing that, carving me some, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, the reason I left the strip on, <laughs> let me turn this back. We have to just have basically three steps. Mark the magnets, north, and then you can keep them separate. Wrap plastic strip loosely around the finger and tape it. And then add the magnets, top and bottom, directly opposite in the proper orientation. Number four is optional. Add optional vertical strip. You will notice that Alex Two's ring, there's an ingenious vertical strip there so that when you wear it, it stays in its proper orientation while you're sleeping. So if you want to, you can take like a a little stick, like a piece of a popsicle stick, and put it on there. Yeah, so that when you put it on, theoretically it won't, you know, it won't turn. That's why I left this on, because maybe you might come up with a way to, uh, to use that. Add another strip to the box. So that's basically how to make the rings. Let me look at my nose. Excuse me. Yes. Is it just the little finger you put the rings on? Only on the little fingers. No other fingers. Now, with the foot braces, what? You don't wear anything else with them. When you do, when you have the magnetic rings on, you only wear those. You, you know what? Else. That's a good question. I would call Alex up or write him, email him, and ask. Yeah. I don't think it matters. Because he didn't say to take off your other rings. Okay. Uh, it's up to you. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah. Sorry. Before we break? Because yes. The reason for the little fingers, I, I think you were saying this meridian, is it? Yeah. Meridian time? Well, meridian he, on his website, alexchu.com, the last thing is spelled C H I U. He gives the explanation for why it has to be the little fingers and not the thumbs, and why on your toes is all the toes. People ask, well, why all the toes and not all the fingers? He answers those questions on his website. When you go to his website, you're going to find some other treats there that are just as amazing as these rings. 
He, on his website, he says he's, he's a mad scientist. And I called him up and I said, Alex, you are not mad. Crazy, yes, <laughs> but you're not mad. And the original meaning of crazy is inspired. So, yeah. Alex, thank you for being crazy. Thank you for being inspired. And he just cracked up. <laughs> he laughed. <laughs> but yes, uh, Alex is inspired, and I support what he does. I, I support uh, these rings. I think that this is one of the tools that Creator, Uma Tiao, Great Mama, Big Father, is providing for us at this time and use, and use Alex as a channel. In the Right Use of Will books, which I discussed last night, and I talked about the imbalance between our will aspect and spirit. Will is magnetic mama essence. Spirit is electric father essence. The imbalance is what causes us to age and to eventually die. Uh, because of these rings, we can now enjoy the effects of a perfectly balanced will and spirit aspect, even though we don't have that yet, and we have a little ways to go before we arrive, before we can get that. In other words, we can enjoy the effects of perfect balance without having achieved perfect balance ourselves, and that's a divine gift. Yes, sir. The process of checking whether it is... The process of checking... The, the process of checking whether the magnets are south or north. Yes. How do you do that using the compass? Okay, that's a good question. Did everybody hear his question? Yes. yes. Plus, and the bottom is going to be south. 
So royal jelly keeps both women and men very fertile. And it tends to keep you younger as well. Okay, it's, it won't reverse aging, but it will definitely help keep you. If you know nothing about the immortality rings and you take royal jelly, it will lengthen your lifespan like it does for the queen bee and keep you fertile and help keep you young. So that's royal jelly, very expensive. If you can afford to, you just take generous amounts of it, especially if you are an older person. If you're young, you don't need it. If you're young and you take it, it just prolongs that. But like I said before, you have the rings, so you don't necessarily need this if you're wearing the rings, but I'm just letting you know, you know that these are things that people have used in the past to extend their lifespan and to stay young looking. Right use of will. Right use of will is the name of a book. I highly urge all people, especially melanated people, to get this book and study it. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. This is the book. Right use of will. The book, right, R-I-G-H-T, use, U-S-E, of, O-F, will, W-I-L-L, dot com. Watkins, Watkins. You can get it in Watkins, people's. Watkins, and, um, and let's just put it. It's a Cecil Road Road. You're kind of looking at it. It's a road. Road, yeah. I'd be good to read all that phone number. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ro 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 Diano, so this yeah. book is very special. Sorry. It mm -hmm. will show you how to heal your will. The emotional body. It's book. denied good the book. feminine magnetic principle within you. It's denied in all human beings on earth. And before we can reach true eternal life, this is something we need to work with. In fact, if you heal your will, you don't need the immortality rings or any of these things. Because when your will is healed, it becomes aligned with your spirit, and you live forever anyway. Uh, the person who, the book, the information in this book is channeled from Creator, mostly from God, some of it from Great Mama. There are seven, no, there are eight books in the series. If you only get this, you've done good. This is really all you need. Everything about rightness of will is right in here. In a nutshell, rightness of will. You do what you want to do. You only do what you want to do. You do not do what you do not want to do. And when you do your thing, you cross nobody else's will, nor do you allow others to cross your will. And periodically, you must go somewhere where nobody can see you or hear you, and then you just use your voice and you express yourself. You just let it all come out. You can scream yeah. at the top of your lungs. You can you can shout. You can cry. You can laugh. But you gotta let. Hey, we gotta do that. Should we all scream? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> when you do this, you, you you're having a release. And if you just if you keep it up. You know, not necessarily scream, but just letting the sounds come out. When you keep this up, it, you start to, you bring in vibration to parts of you that have not vibrated since the beginning of time. We were actually there right at the beginning. And it's frozen like that. And when you use your voice, you're vibrating it out, you're making it shake. And when it shakes, Creator's light can now come in and make it move. And see, this is how we're able to live. The reason why we die is because we have this, this frozen stuff in us that needs to be vibrated. And so by using our voice, we add the vibration, which then draws Creator's light. When you, when you have these emotional release sessions, it's important that you ask Creator for help. You know, to be right there. Great mom and great father, they will be right there with you because they want us to heal, especially black people, because black people basically represent, not represent, they are the capstone of will polarity 
for planet Earth. And if these books are correct for the entire universe. In other words, the healing of black people on Earth will actually cause the healing of the whole planet and the universe. The reason is because this planet is very special. Like no other planet in the universe, Earth expresses great mama, great black mama of creation. One day I noticed that the word Earth and the word heart. Let's see if I can find some bare paper. Here. The word earth and heart. Look at this. E A R T H. Exact same letters. Earth is a physical manifestation of the heart chakra of creation. And it is heart that is needing to be healed. The heart essence is actually the Christ essence. Right now in this room, there are people who are fragments of Christ, fragments of God, fragments of Great Mama, fragments of the Father of Manifestation. When we deny ourselves, see, everybody on earth is guilty of self-denial, denial of the will. The will is the feminine, magnetic aspect in you. It expresses as your emotions, your desire, your feelings. And it is underdeveloped in everybody on the planet because everybody is guilty of self-denial. The first word we probably learned was no. Okay? So we all deny ourselves. We're in jobs we hate, relationships we can't stand. We do things we don't want to do. We feel obligated to do this. Oh, I have to do this because, you know, I'm a mother or I'm a husband or I'm a this or I'm a that. No, you don't. If you deny you, you open the door for others to deny you. There's massive denial building up now on earth. If you heal your will or move towards healing your will, then you escape all that mess. You've seen those bumper stickers in America. It says, spit happens. It says something yeah. else, but you know. Yeah. Okay? Spit won't happen if you were not holding stuff in you. The, 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 the emotion, us suppressing ourselves, suppressing our emotions, we hold that in. Emotions are magnetic. It's pulling. It's still pulling what is resonating to and that's why the spit happens. The spit happens because this stuff is pulling the spit so that you can have an emotional release. If you don't have the release, then a bigger spit comes until you have that emotional release. But guess what? You don't have to wait for spit to happen. Just have the release. Have the emotional release the way I mentioned, using your voice, privately, expressing. And then you will find that it's going to shift stuff in your life. You, it will blow your socks off. <laughs> it will blow your mind. You, let's say you're having a hard time trying to manifest something. You're using positive thinking. No, no. You need to have emotional release sessions. You need to really get into it and let it out. But you do this privately. You're mad at your boss. You want to cuss him out. Cuss him out, but not on the job. <laughs> Privately, yeah. he's not there, and you cuss him out. Cuss God out, because you're holding a lot of anger at him because, of, because he has allowed all this spit to happen to black people. But you don't dare do that because the Bible taught you, oh no, that's blasphemy. Guess what? God wants you to cuss his ass out. He wants you to do this because he knows that you have this release that must come out and you really can't heal and receive his light, his riches, his wealth, all this stuff until you get this spit out of you. That, that thing I told you about that you're holding in. Now, I urge you to read an article in The Muffin Papers. It's called The Hidden Reality or The Good Behind the Bad, something like that. 
and it's on uh, what page is it? It's also channeled from Creator, and He's telling you to have these emotional releases and to really let it out, get it out, let it all come out. It probably is going to take multiple sessions for you to get it out. Let me backtrack. If I upset you by saying cuss God out, don't take it. Don't take it that way. Okay? I love Creator. I love Great Mama. I love Great Father. And I, I love my people. I love my sisters and brothers. And it's imperative for black people to heal. If you listen to gospel songs, it sounds like moaning and groaning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Pain. I hear a lot of pain in it. And see, Black people in America, they did the march to Washington. And they were saying, we shall overcome. But they, they were denying their true emotions, which was, oh, no. But they didn't express that. They should have expressed it. If they expressed it, then things would have really changed. But what happened was they marched. They protested in the presence of denial. Does that make sense? Yes. Whenever you do anything in the presence of denial, it will not have permanence. It will retrograde. It will go back. Every step forward, it'll go 10 steps backwards. That's what we are doing as a race today. We're doing stuff in denial. That's why it doesn't work. And see, the denial dished out to us by certain groups on the planet, it will stop if we stop denying ourselves. If we observe the denials that's already within us and then release it, let it go. Okay? It goes back to rightness of will. Do what you want to do. Don't do what you don't want to do. Be true in your expressions. I'm on the phone. I'm talking to somebody. They're talking to me. I want to go. I'm tired. But out of politeness, I stay there another 10, maybe 15 minutes. You know, my feet are tired and aching. You know, I want to do whatever. I don't do it. That's denial. You start to see the little ways you are denying yourself. Stop it. That will give you the courage to stop it in the bigger ways. Okay? And then bigger. And then by having these emotional release sessions, it's like a type of defecation. I explained in the uh, uh, workshop yesterday, or the lecture yesterday, the average person has anywhere from 20 to 30, excuse me, 2 to 30 or more pounds of hardened feces in the colon that never comes out. Okay, it's, it's constantly poisoning that, that physical body. And that's another reason why people age prematurely. Clean it out. You're going to feel so much better. Well, we have a similar load emotionally. We're holding all this garbage, just weighing us down. It's clogging up our pipes. So by having the emotional release session where you use your voice, and you must be completely honest, get to the rage that's in you, the rage that's under your terror, <laughs> or the terror that's under your rage. See, fear is a mask for anger. When fear gets really intensified, we call it terror. That's a mess for rage and vice versa. Anger. Yes. Yes. Depression, that's really uh, anger. Okay? Night sweats. And so by having these emotion release sessions, at a certain point, you're going to get to what's really bothering. You're going to have a cathartic release. It's going to blow your mind. Literally. Make that stuff go away, and you're gonna feel new. Basis, it actually helps to keep you young, and it keeps you healthy. And it, uh, pardon? Middle flow. Middle. He's he's saying middle flow. The most potent urine is the first morning urine. first morning. The midstream of the first morning urine. If you start off, you just take a little bit, maybe a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon. You can mix it in juice or something else if you want to. Urine is so powerful as a healer that it heals AIDS. I'm talking advanced AIDS. It heals cancer. It heals all known diseases. Urine. 
Don't take my word for it. You can do your own research on the internet. There are books about it. The, one of the best ones is called Your Own Perfect Medicine. Your own, that sounds like urine. Yeah. Your own, yeah. Your own perfect medicine. And that's by Martha, M-A-R-T-H-A, -A, Christie, C-H-R-I-S-T-Y. She has uh, doctor case studies, how urine does all these amazing things in your body, you know, as far as healing and reducing blood pressure and you name it. Uh, infections, making infections go away. You put it on your face, it keeps your skin smooth yeah, and beautiful. Asthma attacks. And young. Yes, sir. Asthma attacks. Asthma attacks. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. Healing it up. Diabetes. I, I put a if you're, if you're diabetes, diabetic. So a month. Totally Could, please say that, sir. I, I, there was a sister who came to me who was diabetic, and I, I told her to, she it got, it was pretty hard at first, <laughs> but she was, a month, and when she went back to the doctor, they said like right. they couldn't, they couldn't believe. Was right. that type two? Diabetes will completely yeah, wipe. Was that type two? Yeah. Urine will wipe out diabetes, any, any disease, yeah. any disease. There was it even an article in the paper saying it uh, treats and cures AIDS. Yes, yes. it does in the paper. Yes, it's like a front page that in. in wow. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. Excuse me, um, are you saying that it would actually um, cure those diseases if you're on the right diet, or does it matter? Okay. Even if you're eating a drug, food, diet, yeah. urine is still incredibly healing and therapeutic. Most people cannot and are not able to eat a pure diet. And so I have the attitude of, since they're going to eat the cake, Let's put energy back into the cake. With this, you can re-energize your drug food and make it healthier. Dr. Schultz, who has the colon cleanse program, he says, look, you see, he has another product called Superfood, and it's whole food nutrition. He says, put it in your beer. You know, that's, beer is a bad food, but Beer with the superfood yeah. is better than beer without the superfood. And speaking of whole food nutrition, somebody gave me this. It's called Maria, Marian Dina Herbs. This yeah. looks like whole food nutrition. I'm just looking at the cover, and I see papaya. Yeah. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And very, papaya apple, oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, There's the nutrients in there. So, Boosted the system. Energy. Okay, if this looks like whole food nutrition as opposed to fractionated, which is what you find dominating the health foods, you want whole food nutrition. That will also keep you young. And people have been cured of diabetes with marandina and cancer and yeah. AIDS and yeah. 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 And lupus, lupus, prostate cancer, all kinds of cancer, you name it. Yeah. It's an amazing product. That's beautiful. See, it's, it's amazing because it's close to nature. Yeah. If they could get the straight out raw pine pineapple, all these things that they put in there, that would be mo better. But they can't get that, so they have to be grateful that they can get this. Yeah. The Mariana, Mariana. I'm messing it up. <laughs> Mariana Dina. Did I say it right? That's right. That's right. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see now. Urine heals mental disease. People that are sick. Psychologically, schizophrenic, it heals schizophrenia. It heals you on all levels. It opens up your third eye. This stuff is amazing. It ain't colored gold for nothing. Yes. Yes, you have a question. What happens to the diabetes? If someone has been on medication for years, and their body is intoxicated with drugs, that's a that's an excellent point, and thank you so much for bringing that up. I forgot. The only time urine therapy is dangerous is when you are on drugs because the drug comes out of your urine, and you're taking drugs. You could get an overdose. Some people who take recreational what about drugs. Drug foods? What about the drug, drug foods? Like no, sugar? no drugs. Straight out drugs. 
Pharmaceutical drugs. Pharmaceutical drugs, prescription drugs, is the number one killer of people in America. Heart disease is number two, cancer is number three. But pharmaceutical prescribed drugs is the number one killer in America. In the, in the world. In the world? Okay. <laughs> yes. It's a worldwide thing, it's everywhere. Can you say it loud? Iatrogenics. Iatrogenics. Yeah. They have a word for it. And they admit it in their medical journals. They admit it. And yet they're still allowed to practice. Please make your statement. No, I was just saying is that also they they carry out a lot of unnecessary procedures like mastectomies, hysterectomies, removing uh, oh, this ovaries and yeah. it's, um, it's necessary and to keep all that money flowing in. Yeah. 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 It's necessary to live. Yeah. Okay, sickness is a trillion dollar a year industry in America. I think it's a the little bit better. Therapy, hormone therapy, the radiation, all these things that right. derange our systems That's right. continuously. Right. We are they, a they, crop. They, they make it seem normal. And they, 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 they. Humans are a crop. We're slaves, we're a crop. We're being consumed on all levels. Whatever it is, the parasites at the top that are consuming us, they got a name. But well, when you start living and practicing rightness of will, all of that is going to turn around. In your life, it will protect you personally. And then it starts to affect others. Because they can feel they can do something different. Mm -hmm. yes. it, it, it all ties into the law of attraction that basically these negative beings are obviously spewing out all this and living on a psychic feeding off us psychically as well as... Uh, You're tuning uh, right in. That's exactly what's going on. In my book, you come to power when you come to a point. I talk about this magnetic attraction. When you suppress, with our wills being denied, our denied will attracts the negative life, the denied life. And so by us healing our wills, now we can attract the life that is not denied, the, the positive life from the new God. Okay? Not the negative life from his denied fragment, Lucifer. See, Lucifer, when creator. When great mama pulled father into existence, purely through her desire, the first act he committed was denying a part of him that he felt he didn't like it, he denied it and broke off. Do you, do you think it's, a, it's about the healing of all separation into oneness? What do you think about There are some things that we cannot become one with. Because when they came into existence, they came into existence in the void. When I read this book, at a certain point I said, you know what? God has a father and a mother. And I, I thought of that because in here he says that a long, long, long time ago when things were not like this on earth, a certain entity came to earth bringing a big fire and he burnt the whole planet. And that was the first time death came to earth. And his intent was to cause the planet to contract so that he could stay here. And it worked. And so, um, what was you saying just now? I was talking about, um, is it to do with the healing of all separation and transition? Thank you, thank you. Okay, separation. Yeah, separation to okay. oneness. Yeah, I got it now. And so, um, uh, this fire that he brought was all that was left from the destruction of an entire universe. And it was that remark that made me think, you mean there are other universes? That means there are other gods. You think, this is the god of this universe, but there are other universes? It turns out that God does have a father, and they speak of it. On, there's a website you can go to, and it will be like an extension. Not an extension, but it's in alignment with right use of will, and it's called God Channel dot com. That article I was reading to you, it came from God Channel dot com. Powerful. So I wonder if that's the same. The channel that's the, the channel that we've got over here. No, it's not. It's not. Oh, it's not. 
Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's why. Do you think we are multi-dimensional beings? So let me finish the other question that I was answering. You know we are. Yeah, I was just saying. I know we are, but I'm just saying is, is yes. what you say. We that means that we are connected to everything at once. Yes. And everything that's happening simultaneously and sequentially is also happening in all other realms, seen and unseen. And if that's the case, it. We are moving into a, a, what they call alignment. Through, the, are we? Would you say that we're moving into some sort of alignment, 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 alignment? You see how this is alignment? We are moving into alignment. See, when you take, when you configure anything into sacred geometry, it opens a portal. It allows divine light to flow in. People coming together especially coming together a certain way. Notice you meet certain people at certain times mm -hmm. in your life, and you know you were supposed to meet that person. Mm -hmm. You know, it's no accident we're all here together. So yes, an alignment is taking place here and continue to take place beyond this. There'll be other people you'll be meeting, other resources you, you will attract to yourself, and it's all in divine harmony. Uh, there's a... I don't know how to... So anyway, back to what I was saying. Uh, this being caused the earth, the fire caused the earth to contract, and the vibrations of the planet drastically lowered and continue to get low. Anyway, this entity will be evicted. It's in the process of getting evicted. Now, um, when God denied that part of himself, it broke off. And we call that part the devil. He's healing his fragments. The separation and the unity that you spoke of. Yes, there's separation. I said that there are some beings that we that, that are we're not a part of, they're not a part of us, and we can never unify with them because they are separate. Let me let me describe. It, it, in, in GodChannel.com, it's going to introduce, it talks about grandmother and grandfather, and how when God goddess came into existence. They came into existence in what, what is called the void. And in the void were these creatures who were the antithesis of grandfather's creation. Grandfather, grandmother's creation. See, the creation of grandmother, grandfather reached absolute perfection. There was an antithesis to that, and it existed in the void. So these beings, they're supposed to be dead. They're the complete opposite, so they would be the opposite of good, the absolute opposite of good. Those beings are not a part of the universe that we live in, but they were awakened by, by God's light, and they are pissed off because they only want to be dead, because that's, that's when they're happy, if I can use that term. Uh, by them being alive, it's extremely painful to them. So their intent is to kill everything in creation. Mm -hmm. They don't want nothing to live. Everything must die so that they can be dead and stay dead and never wake up. Unfortunately, that element is on earth now. That's why people get cancer. Cancer is a direct manifestation of these beings which they call asuras in the, uh, in the writings. That's different from the denial beings that came from God's original denial. You know, where you got Lucifer and his angels and all that other mess. That's, they're separate beings. The Luciferic angels, they don't want everything dead. They just want to be in charge, controlling everything. You know, they're control freaks. Got to be in charge. Got to have everything their way. And got to suck, because they can't generate life. They only suck life. Okay, they appear to be powerful. They got all the money. But that ain't their money. They stole it. And they continue to suck. All their systems on earth are set up to suck. I call it SSS. Sophisticated sucking systems. You always having to pay. You know, always having to pay. We're the only creatures on earth that have to pay to eat. Pay to eat. Pay to live. You don't see ants paying to eat. You don't see cows and chickens paying to eat. But humans, we always have to pay for everything. We're working all the time. You know, we work our whole life, then we retire. Yes, because we're slaves. 
This yeah. is to put it where it's laid. But this was never creator's intent. We had a lot to do with things happening and turning out the way they have on earth because of our denied will. That denied will pulled that being that came. That's, that represented negative life. And we pulled it here because we had denied. And because we were so loving, we thought we had to accept this mother half. <laughs> okay? We should have kicked his kicked him off. The, we had enough strength at that time to do it. But the reason we didn't do it, we had guilt. And so we let his ass stay here. And now he's big and fat and intimidating. Anyway, that's all our power. And by us living right against the will, having this emotional release session, we, we take our power back, and we become more and more powerful, and they become smaller and smaller and smaller, while we get bigger and bigger and bigger. Then we will be able to safely raise, you know, let me put a presentation. We will be able to safely raise our DJ. I don't want to lose my spot. How much time do you have? Uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes? So never mind. Oh. <laughs> okay, 20. <laughs> I'll just go on to the next item. Papaya, <coughs> pineapple. Why is it so great? So it's a rejuvenation food because it's loaded with enzymes, as is royal jelly, by the way. Um, these are fruit that you can eat with meat, protein, and other foods. It will help to digest the food that you eat. When you eat meat, it doesn't fully digest in your colon mm -hmm. because we don't really have enzymes that are strong enough to properly fully digest it. So it becomes food for the colon bacteria. And that's why our feces smells so bad. If you're a meat eater, half of your feces or more is actually uh, germs in the colon. It's been replicated. That's right. And if you are a vegetarian, it's, it's a little bit less than that. So uh, by eating papaya, pineapple, or any digestive enzyme when you eat meat, you ensure that it's going to fully and properly digest. Yes, please. What? Oh, yeah, any, any food. Any food. And mind you, I'm not condemning anybody's meat-eating habits, okay? You can eat your meat, energize it, okay? Sit, sit your food, the, your favorite foods, or just the foods you eat, energize all your food, energize all your water. Don't condemn your, your habits, you know. Uh, as you heal your will through the emotional release sessions, right with the will, you will find that habits that do not support your survival will gently fall away without you struggling to lose that weight, you know, struggling to change this habit. They'll just, they'll just go away effortlessly. We do the most important thing, right use of will. So, uh, sister, yes. you know, uh, you said like the papaya and pineapple. Um, what, what if it's juiced? It would still have the same effect. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Yes. Uh, what are you talking about? The cut pain. The cut pain the enzyme you're talking about mm -hmm. in the pineapple and the uh, papaya. Papaya. You know where I live is Samoa. Pineapple, papaya everywhere. You can get a big, big basket like this, full of papayas for the equivalent of seven American dollars. Damn. I can't even eat all the papayas. They rot on me. <laughs> yeah. Whereas in America, a, a, a papaya about maybe this size is five bucks. <laughs> okay, I'm going to officially conclude this. Do we have any questions? It's not a question, it's a request. Comments, requests, whatever. For you to say. Oh, oh the 47 words of God? Yeah. Before you talk, before before you the name of the author who has written your own perfect medicine, Martha Christie. <laughs> and also, there's her name. Okay, good. And also, you didn't finish in regards to um, if a person is taking medication, um, how that affects with the urine. 
Yeah, the, what happens is the medication. Her question was uh, basically when urine, urine is unsafe when you are also taking medication because the medication comes out of your urine. So you have to be able, sometimes people are able to time it when the medication is in their urine. Uh, some, some people have been able to get a second high off of a uh, recreational drug by computing when that drug is going to come out in their urine. And I think the second high is probably better than the first one because it's been processed through your body. Well, so you're talking like further on throughout the day. Mm -hmm. well, it's a multi-medication multi where you may take tablets or something and then you have to take it again in the afternoon. It's kind of like in the same position really, but it's that the drug is still in the urine. Yeah, you would have to kind of really get to know your body and, you know, determine how it's working, the fluids you're drinking. Mm. Urine is loaded with nutrition. It has minerals, vitamins, hormones. It has uh, about five different anti-carcinogenic agents in it. It has all kinds of marvelous things. When you read about what the urine is, you know, what's in the urine, it will amaze you. Now, urine is incredibly healing. What I figured out was that the re one reason why urine is so healing is because it is naturally structured water. When water becomes structured, structured, it holds tremendous energy. Now, uh, the, the fluids in your body, your blood, it doesn't just rush through your veins, it spirals through your veins. When we look at naturally structured water, like the water that the Hunzas drink up in the mountains, they live to be well over 100, that water is structured water. Because of the way our systems work, I believe that the spiraling of the fluids in our system causes the water to become structured. Because your body can't use the water until it structures it. And so it does that to the urine, and I believe that that's one reason why urine is so powerful as a healer. And you know what, even drinking, this sounds gross because of how we've been conditioned, but if a person does not have urine to drink, they, drinking someone else's urine will actually contribute to their healing tremendously. Uh, this guy was bit by a snake, huh? I know it, but see, we've been taught to think of urine as being nasty, but it's not. It's, it is a vital fluid. In the Bible, it says, drink from thine own cistern. <laughs> and it's also used to make a lot of anti-aging creams. Yes. To use urea. That's urea. right. Yeah. Cistern. That's where they pee. Cistern. It also says, out of thy belly shall flow the waters of the river of life. That's in the Bible. Yeah. Um, also, cistern. Hold that thought. Mahatma Gandhi, he went on these long fasts. Mm -hmm. The reason why he was able to fast so long, he was drinking a full glass of his wow. urine every day. Mm -hmm. That's what sustained him. Did you going to say something? Yeah, because um, it, uh, it's because a lot of people don't see the, the concept behind how they feel that urine is disgusting and stuff. But we also have to remember that energy is never destroyed. It's only changed or transferred. So you have to remember that by drinking water or eating food, it's energy. So it's the same energy that's coming out through what you, you're classifying as waste, but it's the same energy again that obviously you're, you're putting back in. So it's not nothing to be, you know, scared of Recycled. or disgusted. Yeah, exactly. That's what we do. It's the same energy. If a child is sick and the mother wishes to use urine therapy and can't get any urine from the baby, the mother's urine can work for the child. You know, children get ear infections, you drop the urine in the right, ear. Yeah, yeah. The eye infections, you drop the urine in there. Uh, oh, breast milk. Breast milk. Yes. The water bag, what do you think that is? The water bag of a pregnant woman? Oh, okay. It's very akin to the urine. Oh, yes. the amniotic. Yes, the amniotic fluid. So you've got to keep the consent. Yes. Yeah. Very, very much. Mm. So, do we have any more questions or comments before we officially? Yes. <laughs> we have another. What? The straws. She's not come up with the straws. Okay. These, like I said before, uh, you can use these to make your magnetic rings. 
And um, if you don't want to use this, you can use the straws for the same purpose. And for, uh, someone came late and wanted to know how to make the rings. These are just basic instructions. So I'll leave that page down for you to copy. Any more before we tie it up? Okay, well, tomorrow we have a lecture. I have a lecture at, uh, I don't know what time. Um, from, yeah. 12 at from 12 o'clock. From 12 to 2. You, from 12 to 2, I'll be lecturing. That, that's at the Center Prize. Thank you. And, uh, at, uh, play uh, shop later uh, on. Yeah. And then uh, the play shop is uh, from, is here tomorrow, and that's from 5 to 9. Well, we'll be making these things. Positive energy generators. And then we'll after that, yeah. we'll make these. N not the same face shop, but another face shop. We'll make these. That's, that's for Tuesday. That's going to be Tuesday. But tomorrow we're going to be making the, the generators. The Madness. Are there any more questions just before we run out? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, she wants me to sing. She wants me to sing. Okay. The 47 words of God. And that's, um, that's in the muffin papers. I'll sing it for you. It was brought to, it was brought to us by Hideo Mizumoto, Shinto master from Japan. And it's the vibration of the universe. And when you sing it or hear it, it immediately begins your healing process. It starts to heal you. And it brings peace of mind. It allows you to communicate with angels if you continue to sing it on a regular basis. Uh, so I'll sing it for you. <laughs> Great mama. <laughs> He was talking about fear and anger oh, being no, the rage. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. And about the emotional release. And you said it made you feel fantastic and that we haven't seen anything yet. attempt to weed out an individual's old beliefs and perceptions so he can be saved from upcoming illness, illnesses or accidents that stem from these old beliefs and perceptions, regardless of, what, of whether it is a conscious process or not. Or not. I'm going to read somewhere else. What if I told you that if people made morality their God, they might be forced into immoral acts 
by their own desire, their own subconscious, to balance out that idolatry and save their very lives, which usually happens without the light of understanding and acceptance and creates plenty of guilt. What if I told you that if you deny, repress, condemn, judge, and send away your own impulses to kill, steal, rape, or avenge your own child, a family member, or someone from the street, or even your national leader, may just act it out for you? Turn the page. Are you terrified to let go of the Ten Commandments as your God? Are morals and principles your God? Whom would you like to be your God now, morals or love? Who is God for you? God that is speaking or God that spoke? God that is or God that was? Which God do you listen to? Which God do you wish to listen to now? The one that is scolding you or the one that is accepting you with all your quote unquote imperfections? The one that is judging you as a sinner or the one that is now giving you back the memory and knowledge that you have an absolutely valid reason to be that way. To be the way you are. Are you ready to let go of the old judging God and meet a new, loving, evolved, expanded God? If yes, then let's go. Let the new God in. Let's dance together. You are there and I am here. Let's dance our distance away. <clears throat> Please don't think of <coughs> Let's dance together. You are there and I am here. Let's dance our distance away. Please don't think of yourself as small or unworthy. I want to dance with you. Do you hear me? It's me. God is talking to you now. The only quality I require to dance with me is your desire to dance with me. Would you please now, may I? Here we go. Dance. Dance with me. More. Move, love. Move. God is dancing with you. Move. Feel. Are you dancing? Move. Here we go. That's it. Beautiful. So you're saying you're ready to let go of the me of yesterday? Are you ready to accept and embrace the me of today? That's great. It's beautiful. I love it. Dance. Love. Dance. I missed you too. When you were dancing with the me of yesterday and I was all alone, please catch up with me every day. I am changing, expanding every moment. Don't look for me into the past and its frozen images of me. If you're 20 years old, you wouldn't want someone longing for and seeking the two-year-old you and ignoring the present you, the grown-up you, the evolved you. You wouldn't want someone only loving your photograph and not you, would you? So why are you only relating to the me of the past and ignoring the me of the present? Why are you only talking to my photographs and not me? The evolved me, the grown-up me, the expanded me. Don't turn around, I'm not there. I'm right here, standing in front of you and longing for you to see me and feel me. I want to speak to you and be heard by you. Do you feel what I feel? Feel it, feel it now. I want you to talk to me, not to my shadows. I want you to look at me, not at my frozen images. I want you to make love with me, not with my photographs. Relate to the me of today, not the me of yesterday. He goes on and on, and then he talks about <coughs> venting, moving. He says, 
says, are you dancing? Move, love, move. That's it, beautiful. Listen, listen to me now. You've been asking for clear directions. I'll give you clear directions. Only listen carefully. It is so easy that it seems hard. It is like trying to explain how your eyes blink. Move, love, don't stop, listen. When you relate to me, do it as if I were standing right in front of you and as if I were your spouse or a friend. And then direct your attention inside yourself and access and feel that pain, that discomfort, or whatever is quote unquote bothering you. Feel it as deeply and thoroughly as you possibly can. Do not go into your thoughts. Go into your feelings and sensations instead. Don't think it, feel it. And sound it. If you were angry with your spouse, would you be able to make love with him or her before expressing how you feel? Same here. You can't love me the way I know you can until you express all your discontent. And guess what? I'm ready to take it like a real lover would. So here, I am your spouse now. Go ahead and have a fight with me. And feel good about it. Like you're building something, not destroying. The attitude is, we are loving each other and we are helping each other to evolve. We are not denying our emotions we are working them out. We welcome conflicts and expression of emotions as part of our healing processes and evolution. And we accept fights as emotional aerobics. And it's okay by us to have a fight. A conflict or a fight does not negate our love, it purifies it. We accept dissonance as part of our harmony. If your present problems are not throwing you into your emotions, if you feel numb and frozen, go into your past, find these feelings and emotions there, and experience them only with me now, consciously. Experience them willingly, invitingly, celebrate them no matter how ugly or unwanted they seem to you. They are all beautiful to me now. Go inside your pain or discomfort, emotional or physical. Feel it. See its shape, color, heat, intensity, sharpness, dullness, location, vibration, anything or everything. Now, if that pain or whatever you feel would have a language of its own, how would that pain sound? Talk its language. Give me that sound. Compose it. Remember, it's the mother who is trying to reach me through you and be accepted and enlightened by me. So give her to me. Give me your feelings, no matter how unappealing or out of sorts they seem to you. <laughs> Imagine for a moment that you are a psychiatric patient, no judgment please, but now you are in a very special new kind of clinic where instead of shutting down your impulses, you are welcome to express them in any and every way that they are. You are allowed to act out the craziest sounds and movements that you can imagine without fear of being criticized or judged in any way. You don't need anybody's approval for it, not even your own consciousness. Play a kid, an infant, go nuts. Allow and accept lovingly and full-heartedly everything that comes up as I do now. Don't dare judge these feelings. They are my wife. I wish you would play this game every day so I can meet and heal and hold her 
in my arms every day. Your expressions, love or hate, are teaching me something about mother and you, heart. I need to hear them to evolve. That blew my mind. God needs you to evolve. He needs you to express your feelings to him because you're giving his wife back to him and helping to heal creation by so doing. Only, pardon me, or you can also be creative about it. You can put on music that is most descriptive of how you feel. Turn up the volume and talk, sing, and scream your emotions with it to me. It can be rock, rap, heavy metal, black gospel, anything that helps you activate and express your feelings. Unbeautified. You can also be really explicit with your movements. You can make all the improper, impolite, forbidden movements you feel like doing. If you feel angry directly at me or through people, tell me just how angry you are. Tell me like it is. Don't be intimidated. Yes, you can tell me how you hate me. If you feel so, but most importantly, tell me how that hate feels. And so for all the other feelings, you have. Tell me straight, don't be afraid. I can handle it. Not only can I handle it, I can enlighten you. And I can give you a new life and a new livelihood instead. Don't give it to people who are quote unquote causing it. Give it to me. If you give it to people, you may, quote, unquote, adopt their problems. Only I can give you light instead. So are you ready now? Tell me openly and honestly how it feels to be in pain, fear, rejected, unloved, unwanted. Get emotional. Get intimate with me. Move me with your cries. Let me know how it feels and sounds. I will hold you in my arms. Give it all to me now, will you? Give me your anger, resentment, fear, terror, hopelessness, disgust, emotional or sexual frustration, any pain, any discomfort, make me feel it. Feel it to me now. You can say, God, I hate feeling this, I resent this, and I hate you, and I hate everything. It feels like, and then there's a line with a question mark, like what? Give me the sound, the beastly sounds, the body movements, the words are secondary. I want your feelings, not your words. Open up to me, give it to me now. Scream it, growl it, moan it, groan it, cry, hiss it, howl, sing it, dance it, play it, drum it, Tap it, jump it, fall, fall it, shake it, trance it, love it to me, go hysterical, cry to me like a little baby, an infant, I'll hold you in my arms, give it to me now, move my love, move, you're doing beautifully, soon you will know for yourself just how beautifully your expressions, love or hate, are teaching me something about mother and you, heart. I need to hear them to evolve. Your favorite songs are your best prayers. Dear heart, your earthly songs and dances are really prayers and expressions of mother in you. Sing, dance, make love as an expression and elevation of mother to me. As an arising of the kundalini to consciousness, 
as your most wholesome and genuine prayer. Listen to what is trying to burst out of you. Sing your concerns to me. Sing your desires to me. Sing your feelings to me. Your sensations, your longings, resentments. Sing your pain to me. Sing your love to me. Sing it, dance it, drum it, babble it, gibberish it to me. Your expressions, love or hate, are teaching me something about mother and you, heart. I need to hear them to evolve. I cannot give you anything if you are not empty. It is like trying to pour liquid into a full glass. Remember that, love, directly to me or through people brings salvation, but it cannot be poured into you and accumulated if your vessel is full of aggression, passive or active, chronic or acute, conscious or subconscious. If you try to squeeze love on top of aggression, you might get a crooked love. The right sequence is empty yourself of your discomfort first and only then open to receive and accumulate love. So go ahead, empty yourself of your old emotions routinely and regularly and give them to me so I can give you my help instead. I need your emotions to be materialized into sounds and movements to be able to help you. Words alone cannot do it. I need to know how you feel, every nuance of it. Don't just assume that I, God, am supposed to know everything. I only know what I know. The rest of you tell me. I know only, I know the knowledge you have the feelings. Give me the feelings. I'll give you the knowledge instead. I need you as much as you need me. Your feelings are my mate. Remember? So give them to me. You've been asking for practical advice. I'll give it to you. Keep asking and keep your ears and senses open. I'm going to end on that. There's more. And it gets more touching. It's incredible. <coughs> See, he is our father. We have two fathers. We have two mothers. We have your biological parents, and you have divine parents. We really, truly are their children, and they do care about us, even though it doesn't seem like sometimes they do. Things are changing. We are moving into a new vibration. Bad stuff can't stay like that forever. It has to evolve or move on. So this is the time now for our healing. And we are attracting the tools that we need. Excuse me. We are attracting the tools that we need. We're attracting the knowledge, finances, whatever it is that we need for our healing, especially if we are sincere. The most important thing for you to heal is your will, emotional body. So I encourage you, please, read what is the will. Read that article. It's on the internet. Send out muffin papers. <laughs> what did y'all think about it? You don't have to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean a muffin paper? No, no. Oh, you're Stuff I was reading. Yes, yes. That blew my mind. I was in tears. God needs yeah. us to evolve. Yeah. Yeah. He literally needs us. He can't get there without us. And he wants your feelings. I'm speaking of Father God. See, your feelings is his wife. Your feelings is mama in you. Mama. Your healing mama. Remember I said earth, heart? So, um, I'm standing here speechless. Good for a lecture. <laughs> <laughs>